Okay, everybody, let's try another example. So this one is a little bit hard to visualize, so I'll read it and then we'll talk about it. So I've got two L102 X76 X9 and a half structural steel angles. They're shown in the picture right here. Um, and they're used as a compression member that is four and a half meters long. The angles are separated at intervals by spacer blocks and connected by bolts. And these make sure that the double angle shape acts as one structural member. And saying assumed pin connections at each end of the column and use E equals 200 gigapascals for the steel. So you're looking at this at the end and being like, well, where's the force? Is it coming from here? It's not. Like you have to look at this from the side. So if I'm looking at it from the side, I would see something that looks kind of like this. That's one L shape. I'm looking at it from the front. So looking at it from an edge, I see it like this way. Looking at it from you know, the actual length I'll be seeing is this. I have some sort of spacer block in the middle. And then I have a second L shape on the other side. So that is the member we're having here, okay? Now, what's an issue for us is that this can buckle in one of two ways. I can buckle about this axis as in it begins bending in that direction, or I can buckle about this axis. And I don't know to start which one's gonna fail first. So I'll have to check both of these. So what are we finding? Well, we're gonna find the Euler buckling load if we have a five millimeter spacer block or a 20 millimeter spacer block. So with all that being said, let's get right into it. Okay, so first off, we don't have to calculate anything for those shapes, just look it up. It's in the appendices for an L block. And so you can look up, you find out that the area is gonna be 1600 millimeters squared. That's why I'm writing through it. Moners around the X axis and Y axis given. And we have this value right here, which is 19.7, which is our centroid. Okay, so let's figure out our buckling about the horizontal axis first. Mm -hmm. So for our horizontal, goodness, our horizontal axis, blah, struggling here today, I apologize. I'm gonna have my moment inertia right there is given, perfect. And my moment inertia for both of these, since there's two shapes, is gonna be twice that. We're also assuming that that spacer block doesn't do diddly squat. It's not actually helping um, it's not actually helping us to support the load. It's just there. So this one's really easy. I don't really have to do too much here. I know the moment inertia is just twice my moment inertia for one L block because I got two of them. I know the load, or sorry, the modulus solicity that's given. And I know what my length is. It's all given. So I get 319,726 newtons. That one was pretty easy. It was just plug and chug. And once again, it doesn't tell us there's any sort of supports. So we're just assuming that the first load, the first mode is when it fails. So n equals one. And therefore n squared is also equal to one. Okay, now what if we buckle around the vertical cross-sectional axis? So this is where things get a bit different and we have to care about our spacer block. So remember when I have that vertical axis, before I was saying that it was buckling around the x-axis, which meant that this was going perfectly through the centroid of both these members. I didn't have to use the parallel axis theorem to worry about anything. It was great. But as soon as I go through the vertical axis right here, I'm no longer going through the centroid. I'm gonna to have to use the parallel axis theorem to correct the moment of inertia. And so you'll see that right here. This, let's make sure I grab it right. Yes, this right here is my moment of inertia around the vertical axis. So I have that, that's times two once again. Sorry, it's not times two quite yet. So I'm gonna multiply it by two because there's two of them. And then I have to do the parallel axis theorem. Parallel axis theorem is, goodness, um, d squared times a. That's that correction term I have to add on. So the area is given just from the appendices. That's the area right there. And this right here is d squared. So it tells me that my, my centroid, which is not actually in the member, just so you know, it's more like in the middle of the L shape. I'll say it's right here. It is 19.7 from that bottom edge. And then I have to take into account, well, I have this spacer block, right? And that's what I'm buckling around. And so I go half the distance of the spacer block. So that's five over two plus 19.7, that is my value for D. That's what I'm getting right there. And that's where you see that five over two, that's from the spacer block. And this is just taken from the appendices for the centroid. 
So mo inertia is the hardest part of this. It's still not very difficult. I would say this is one of those problems which if you're doing it by yourself, it's more difficult than anything just to visualize it. And I get this as my moment inertia. After that, plug and chuck. I have my moment inertia, I know everything else, and I get 307,160 newtons. So I already see that this is gonna fail more quickly around the vertical axis than the horizontal with a five millimeter um, spacer. But we have one more to do. Let's check out the 20 millimeter spacer. Now the 20 millimeter spacer will only Um, <clears throat> will only change for the vertical axis. Everything else is going to be the same. So going back to here, what it's going to do is I'm going to have this value be slightly larger. So this will now be 20 divided by 2 instead of 5 divided by 2. And so that will increase my moment of inertia. If I increase my moment of inertia, I will increase my critical load. So that's important to know. Going back a little bit. So that's what I do right here. And what you see then is since I increased my moment inertia quite a lot by having that, because the d squared a term is quite considerable, my buckling load actually increases dramatically. And that makes a lot of sense because if we spread these out, I am making, you know, having a much wider stance here. It's going to be a lot harder for it to bend around this axis. It's not going to change anything for the other axis, but it'll be harder for it to bend around that axis. And, you know, that makes a lot of sense for a lot of different things you're trying to do. Um, it just has a more stable base. It's another reason why we are okay with lots of empty space in most structural members. Because if the more, further out we put the mass from our center, the more stable the shape is. Like, that'll have a higher moment of inertia, um, and it's harder to bend. So that's why a lot of our members are hollow. Okay, so the Euler buckling load for a 20 millimeter spacer block is going to be 320 kilonewtons because that is the minimum. The horizontal axis is the one that fails first for 20, and the vertical axis is the one that fails first for 5. So there is one of those problems where you have to check both. But I think that's it. So, yep, I'll see you all next time as we do this problem. Have a good one. Bye-bye.